Good morning, everybody. It is April 16th, 2020, and it is a beautiful day in the neighborhood. Uh, thank you for being my neighbor. I'm sorry I couldn't resist that one right there. But we are in week five now, by my count, of our quarantine. How are you holding up? How are you getting along? A decade from now, people will be asking you, uh, how did you spend quarantine time? What did you do during the coronavirus? And I hope that many of you can say, well, every day I attended Bible study and it was really a time in my life where God really spoke to my heart, grew me, and matured me in my walk with Him. I have been burdened over the last 24 hours for our health care workers. I've had a couple conversations with people that are in the health care industry and I heard of one a nurse who has not been home in five weeks because he doesn't want to bring that into this into his home with his children and so I think we really need to be praying for good morning Ed I think we really need to be praying for those that are serving uh, the community in our health care industry and ask the Lord to just really watch over them and give them peace give them strength uh, one other thought as people are coming online this morning just remember this kindness matters kindness matters uh, be kind during this period and reach out to people I was really, hey Lisa, good to see you. I was really encouraged by Crystal Smith, who decided she wanted to raise some money for uh, for Crystal Smith Green, who wanted to raise some money for Amazing Grace Food Pantry for her birthday. And so she set up a fundraiser, and she set the goal at $200, and they hit that like almost immediately, and she kept having to r raise the goal, and eventually she had wound up raising $500 for people that are hungry in her own community, Kindness matters. I think that is just absolutely amazing. Next week, we're actually going to be talking about the subject of why can't we get along or how do we get along during this time of quarantine. And so that will be our Bible study next week. But this week, we are talking about Luke chapter 24. So if you have your Bible, go ahead and grab your Bible, open it up, turn it on. And we have been looking at these two guys, Cleopas and his friend, who are doing the, I've been calling it the Emmaus 10K. It's about seven miles from Jerusalem to Emmaus, and there's a road that extends there. And so these two guys, they were walking down that road, and the events of the cross and the resurrection had just unfolded. <clears throat> they were grieving. The Bible says that they were discouraged, and they were trying to figure it all out. And then we see Jesus flash a, a glimpse of his divine sense of humor Jesus starts walking next to them and he doesn't reveal who he is and he even he even begins asking a few questions and they're like man have you not heard what happened in Jerusalem are you the only one were you living under a rock this whole time and Jesus looks at him and he's like well, what things what things tell me and so they begin telling Jesus about his own death and resurrection and how they're trying to process it and so in verse 25 of Luke 24, Jesus looks at them and he says these words. Follow along with me there if you have a copy of the scriptures. Uh, he said to them, How foolish and slow you are to believe all that the prophets have spoken. Wasn't it necessary for the Messiah to suffer these things and enter into his glory? And then beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted for them the things concerning himself in all the scriptures. Now, it always stings a little bit whenever J Jesus calls you foolish and slow, but uh, he, he, he kind of gets up in these guys' face a little bit, but then he begins taking them through the entire scripture. He goes all the way back to Moses and the first five books of the Bible and how God had been working everything up to that moment of the cross. One of the most amazing things about scripture is its continuity. It's continuity. Josh McDowell, if you haven't ever read Josh McDowell's books, he has a lot of, of good books on apologetics. How do you defend? How do you understand the faith? And he has this quote on the Bible. The Bible was written on three different continents in three different languages by 40 plus others over a period of over 1,500 years. Now think about that. Three different continents, three different languages, 40 different authors, over 1,500 years, and yet there is this amazing continuity throughout the entire Bible. 
And so you see this. It's ultimately captured in the verse that we looked at a couple weeks ago, John 3.16. God loved, God sent, I believe, and then I live. You see, the, the story begins all the way, hey, Mike Courtney, the story begins all the way back in the soils of Eden where God creates and he looks at this and he says, this is good and there is a peace, there is a shalom, there is a harmony between God's creation and himself and then sin slithers into the scene and the peace is fractured. It's broken. And so at that point, you have the story of redemption beginning to unfold and God, motivated by his love, begins to redeem a people unto himself for his glory. So God loves and then God sent. God sent his son and his son intervenes into our scene so that we might be redeemed. His son lives the life that we could never live, unsaturated by sin. His son takes on sin upon the cross, cross, absorbs the wrath of God into himself, takes it into the grave, and yet because he is altogether pure and holy, he overcomes the grave and extends to us an invitation. An invitation to believe to believe in Him, to trust in Him. And whenever we believe in Him, God sees us in Him, and God sees us and declares us righteous in Jesus Christ. And He begins transforming our life from the inside out so that we might live for Him and reflect His glory, radiate His glory everywhere He goes. God loves, God gives, we believe, we live. And Jesus takes these guys back all the way through And he begins invading their discussion. He invades their argument. He invades their discouragement. He invades their grief with his love, grace, and truth. Have you ever had God do that? You have all these arguments. You have this discouragement. You you have all this analysis and everything that you're thinking. And then suddenly God just joins you along the way. And he invades it all. And you find that Jesus brings hope to your grief. He brings strength to your discouragement. Truth to your arguments and perspective to your confusion. Well, let's keep going. Verse 28 of Luke 24 says, They came near the village where they were going, and he gave the impression that he was going farther. But they urged him, Stay with us, because it's almost evening, and now the day is almost over. So he went in to stay with them. And it was as he reclined at the table with them, he took the bread, blessed and broke, and gave it to them. And then their eyes were opened. So we have this moment where where Jesus is eating a meal with them. He breaks the bread and gives it to them. And we talked about the bread last week in our Lord's Supper, uh, how how the bread represents the brokenness of Christ. And Jesus speaks to us in the universal language of brokenness. We've all experienced the pain and the separation that goes with sin. And whenever they eat the bread, their eyes are open and they recognize Him. And then He disappears. And they said to each other, Weren't our hearts burning within us while he was talking with us on the road and explaining the scriptures to us? And that very hour they got up and returned to Jerusalem. They found the eleven and those with them gathered together who said, The Lord has truly been raised and has appeared to Simon. And then they began to describe what had happened to them on the road and how he was made known to them in the breaking of bread. There are times when God invades your heart and he opens your eyes and everything changes. And often you don't even understand that it was God at first. But then you begin to realize the King of the universe, the Lord of Lords, has joined you along the path. He's invaded your life and He's speaking into your heart. And that's exactly what happened to Cleopas and his friend that morning as they were walking the 10K journey to Emmaus. They didn't realize that this was going to be a life-changing moment, but God intervened and He invaded their heart. When your heart gets right with God, your life follows. I, I'm always encouraged by Patrick Williams. He is our worship children's worship director at Murphy Church, and he's also a runner, and he likes to teach cross-country to teenagers. And I heard him leading a cross-country practice the other day, and he said, Hey guys, your cardio is the first to go. The first thing you got to do is get your heart back in shape. Get that rhythm going. And when the heart gets back in shape, the legs follow. The reason why whenever you run, you start breathing really heavy and your legs feel like jello is because your heart's not in shape. Get your heart in shape and the rest of the body follows. And the same thing's true in our spiritual life. Whenever our heart 
gets in shape, the body follows. When our heart tunes into the voice of Jesus, the body follows. There's a few times in my life when God just intervened in such a way that I felt my heart ablaze. How about you? Have you ever had God come alongside you and speak into your life and you couldn't really explain it, didn't see it coming, but suddenly your heart was ablaze? I remember as a six-year-old boy, the night that I realized that I needed to be saved. And I realized that I was a sinner and I needed forgiveness and I knelt beside my bed. My dad was beside me and I prayed to receive Christ as my Lord and Savior. And I remember that feeling of my heart being a ablaze. I remember whenever as a 14-year-old boy, I was at youth camp Sandia Mountains just outside of Albuquerque in New Mexico. I was sitting in a song service and out of nowhere, I felt the Holy Spirit's power and call on my life to be a, a preacher, to, to teach the scriptures and to do what I'm doing right now. It was a powerful, powerful moment where the Lord just set my heart ablaze. There was another time whenever I was a 35-year-old man, I'd been a pastor at that time for about seven years, been in ministry already for about 15, 16 years at that time. And I remember I was listening to a podcast, lying in bed at night, and God began to just speak to my heart, and my heart was ablaze. And what He taught me that night is that His love for me is not based upon my loveliness, that He meets us where we are and He takes us to where we need to be, and that God comes to us and whenever He sees us in Christ, there is no condemnation for those that are in Christ. There is a love that has been extended to you that takes you where you are and lovingly guides you to where you need to be. And for the first time in my life, I began to realize that I don't have to stay up on that performance treadmill all the time in order to be loved by God, that God loves me in Christ. I think looking back on these weeks, I'll look back at them as a time where uh, my heart was ablaze. There's been times along this journey already, and I know that there's more to come, where God just came alongside, spoke into my heart, spoke into your heart, hit us like, like a ton of bricks, and you can testify, my heart's ablaze. I'm hearing the voice of God, and He's speaking to me. And I wonder if God isn't setting your heart ablaze this morning. And maybe He's showing you your need for a Savior, and your reaction simply needs to be to trust and place your faith in Christ as Lord and Savior. Maybe He's calling you to take that baton and to run your lap and to be a parent, to be a godly business leader, to be a teacher, to be a person that takes the, the baton of faith and, and you live your life with faithfulness and godliness and you pass that to the next generation and perhaps He's speaking into your life saying, hey, you need to train up the children. You need to, you need to make that investment. You need to be a person that goes beyond yourself with your faith. Maybe God is calling you to take some step of faith in your life and you've been fighting, you've been holding back for whatever reason. It's been a difficult struggle. It's been a tug of war between you and God, but he's been speaking to you and your heart is ablaze and you know this is God. Or maybe today it's, it's the day that you begin to realize that God's love for you is not based on your loveliness, but it's extended to you in grace through Christ and that He loves you and you are safe in His hands. You belong to Him for all eternity. When you are in Christ, nothing can separate you from the love of God. That sets my heart ablaze. And I want you guys to know that God loves you. He's walking with you. And you can trust Him. And in those moments where you feel the still small voice of the Holy Spirit speaking to you, listen. Listen. It's going to cause a crisis within you. Steps of faith always cause crises within us. But then take those steps, one step at a time, one day at a time. And God will use your life, and God will transform your heart, and God will bring glory. God will bring glory through you to Himself. So let me ask you this question. A lot of people probably asked you, how you doing? How's your heart? How's your heart today? Would you pray with me? Father, I thank you for everyone that is listening, those that might be watching this video later. I pray that you will help us to open your heart, open our heart, and hear from you. Father, I pray for healing, healing of our bodies and also healing of our souls. 
I pray, Father, for strengthening of our families. I pray, Father, that we will take this time to set our minds and our hearts upon those things which are above. And Lord, may you give us strength and wisdom to deal with the things that we face day after day. Lord, may people know that they are loved by you and that nothing can separate them from your love because of Christ. He has conquered the wall of separation. He has conquered death. Father, may people who are lonely know that they're not alone. And Lord, may Murphy Church know that they are loved, loved by you. May they know of my love for them. But beyond that, may they know that, that there's a Savior who's walking with them, who loves them each step of the way. And help us, Lord, to use this day for your glory. Bring healing, encouragement, perspective to our heart. Lord, be with those who are sick. Be with those who are taking care of the sick. And I ask, Father, for a cure. I ask, Father, for your power to fall upon us. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you for joining me for Bible study. I really appreciate it. I remember Music Heals with Paul Reed this evening at 9.15 tonight. Uh, if you haven't caught that before, I know it will be a true blessing to you. And then Sunday, live stream at 11. Please help us share by sharing. So if you will like and share and subscribe and do all those things that go along with social media, it helps us get the word out so that the gospel might advance. People are listening. And let's, uh, let's do everything we can to share the gospel in a, a loving, powerful way with them. Look forward to seeing you Sunday at 11. And then next week, I'm going to be with you from Tuesday through Friday. So we're going to do four days next week as we talk about this subject of how do we get along and deal with conflict uh, while we are at home. God bless you guys. Love you all. We'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.